The Genesis G80. Like many brands, including Hyundai, they overuse the word sport. In fact, they create trim levels with this name by putting a badge on or changing some color or putting red on the seats. Oftentimes, it means nothing more than a word. Well, they've brought the sport trim package back for the G80. I drove the last generation car and I was left mostly unimpressed. But this car is a bit different, and I'm gonna tell you why I think this is probably the best car they've ever made. If you're someone that is interested in cars, or more specifically luxury cars, you may not know a lot about Hyundai or Genesis as a brand. And that's because if you go in the history books, you'll see even like two generations ago, a lot of it was just a copy and paste job of what the Europeans were doing. In 2022 with the Genesis G80, at least with the Sport, there have been some significant updates to this car that make it feel way more special. They have their own brand character, their, their own unique interior design here, which is what makes it feel like it's every bit worth the dollars that you're paying for it or leasing it, of course. So the sport trim, you get a different steering wheel and it feels way more traditional. It feels more normal to look at and it is great in the hand. You have these alloy pedals that feel like they are more crafted and they get rid of the open pore wood for this carbon fiber accent. And before I say that, I need to preface it by saying it's not traditional carbon fiber weave that has been overused in every car. It is this checkerboard pattern. It is high contrast outlined by alloy trim. When you use a high contrast material, typically manufacturers are just using panel black because it's the easiest, cheapest thing to do. This does it without showing every single piece of dust and fingerprint that you can possibly throw at it. And it, it elevates the specialness of the cabin. They have blended physical and touch controls in certain places without having to use the infotainment screen for everything. Like for example, the HVAC controls are still physical, it's a hybrid physical and touch, but everything is here. I don't have to go into the infotainment for 90% of the functionality and it's very easy to use. You can basically not even look and use it. And it's thought to this entire space like that that, that really makes it a much more comfortable, peaceful place to operate. Now, Pretty much everything else in here, aside from the seats, are almost the same as the regular G80, so I'm not going to cover that. The seats, you can now choose a red. You can choose this black with the triangular pattern on it, and there is a kind of beige-ish gray color as well. But you look at the design of the seats, and again, they feel way more expensive, and they look way more expensive than the price would suggest, but they give you a little bit of that customization option here with the sport trim. Now, my favorite things about the interior is the way that they've blended technology and the legacy controls. Now, while the infotainment screen looks like it is just stuck up here, it is an ultra wide aspect and it, the black levels are great because at night it does not blind you. You can literally just dim it down and you don't need to turn the screen off. And some of that is just clever use of how they've designed their UI. For example, the home screen. On the far left closest to the driver is just your time and your date and your basic function like what song's playing. Everything else kind of fades out to a black gradient near the end and you're not distracted by it. It's just very clean and overall the usability is very similar. I mean, I do have some problems with usability with the D-pad touch control and all that, but overall the interior space is so well executed. I'm looking forward to looking underneath when we put it on the lift. Underneath the Genesis G80 again, this time with the Sport variant, there's been some changes, which I'll cover in a minute. But I need to celebrate what they've done here for the price point. So the front suspension, it's all aluminum links. It is a multi-link design. It looks like a double wishbone, but it's a multi-link with a virtual lower ball joint. The rear end of the car is mostly aluminum, 
but the big story here is it, is it has a front aluminum and a rear aluminum subframe. This is something you're not going to find in basically any luxury car until you get to the higher end BMWs. Audi doesn't do it on most of their cars. Mercedes doesn't do it until you get to the high end. And Lexus does not do it at all. So why is that important? Well, they have lowered the weight of the car at the lowest point. The other thing is it gives them tuning ability, namely on the front suspension and the rear, to control the comfort level, the sportiness level. They just have much more overhead in terms of tuning. And this, at least on the aluminum links, has been reserved for the G80 and G90. The SUV equivalents do not get that. And part of the magic of the G80 is its quietness and refinement. And they do that in large part by all the vibration and frequency isolators to get rid of unwanted road noise. They also have these composite panels that look like they have felt on them. This dampens noise from the road. That is all the magic in here. Now, in terms of the sport, they have retuned the electronic dampers here. They've added a Sport Plus mode, and they have added rear wheel steering, which you could see in the original G80. There's this huge chasm of space where they could put it. This has it. It's a single motor unit that controls the tow in and out of both rear wheels. They do not have individual modules. Plenty of space for that, and it gives the car a more dynamic feeling in slower speed corners because it makes it more agile, reduces the wheelbase, and when you're on the higher speed areas, it just turns the wheels a little bit less to give you more control or that feeling of control. And again, this is very special for this price point. This is, you got under here, you would never think that you're talking about like a $60,000, $70,000 car. So the other thing that they don't have is air ride at this point. And their engineers had said in the past, they don't need to do air ride on a car like this because they've been able to refine the car so much in traditional suspension tuning using monotube dampers and having the electronic control and the programming of them, they didn't need the complication and the cost of engineering to do air ride. And honestly, it's time to take this on the road and see if they're right. Jack, it's your first introduction, the G80 Sport Package. You ready for launch control I and am. Sport Plus? I'm ready for some Nam Yang engineering. This thing's quick. It is quick. So I'm gonna talk about some of the key differences here. The Sport Plus mode has added some recalibration to the engine and transmission. So typically when you're in eco mode or normal mode or whatever, there is a ton of lag off the line. This car takes a long time to build up that power or boost to get it going. So they've added Sport Plus, which raises the RPM a bit. And then of course gives you launch control, which you're never gonna use. And then there's this kind of synthetically sharpened shift pattern that they add. And it's like, it doesn't feel natural. Like the ZF, you, you could tell they're like, oh, let's just give it a little, little bit of snap, but it really does nothing other than creates a jolt in the shift performance. And the Sport Plus mode obviously increases the stiffness of the dampers. Now I've driven this mostly at six degrees Fahrenheit, so the car feels way firmer than it normally would. But between the spring rate increases and the damper rate increases, this is a much more firm car, at least in Sport Plus, than the G80 equivalent without this package. The regular G80 is a pure luxury cruiser, right? It's basically a fat dog, and that's why it's a great vehicle for what it is. How does the rear steer that's been added to this change the way this car performs? So I'm gonna just talk through the dynamics of what I like and what I dislike about it. The rear steer is very noticeable in slow speed operation. It, you can feel the rear end moving. However, sometimes with tuning of the rear steer module, it can feel very unnatural. And when I say unnatural, you notice it a lot where there's a disconnect between the front and the rear end. So there's this bobble effect that you get as the back starts, or it sends torque to the back and the back breaks loose a little bit. And there's this snap effect that you get where you correct it and then there's this shock wave event where it's like rebounding the front end. So there, is, so there is a disconnect between the front and the rear where they don't feel like they're from the same vehicle, right? Uh, yes, there's, there's too much delay between the front and the back when the back breaks loose. And like I was starting to say, 
some of it is the steering speed. The, the ratio that they've chosen here is too slow. Like you get in the BMWs that have a variable gear ratio steering rack and it's quick, it's snappy to get the car to respond. You don't have to make these huge abrupt movements. And as a result, because you're correcting and then when you whip the wheel back the other way, there's that long delay return to center and it creates this huge yaw mo moment between the front and the back. And it just does not feel as natural as it should be. And, you know, I'm looking at this from a performance perspective. If you're going to do rear steer, you're going to add a Sport Plus mode. You know, these are these are kind of considerations that you want to kind of think about. Is it fun to drive? And I think it adds some fun, but this needs far, far more time in terms of tuning that I don't think that they did, at least from a performance driving perspective. So stripping away that, right, the reality is even with, you know, the M Sport Package 5 Series or like a well-equipped Audi A6. Most of the people who are buying this car want it to be fast in a straight line, comfortable on long journeys, and have that luxury car feel. Does it do that? It does everything. The all So you can only get the Sport Package with all-wheel drive. You can't get a rear-wheel drive version. So it's important that this still feels like a rear-wheel drive platform. And in Sport Plus, it does. It sends all the power to the back, and you can get the back end to break loose. So they've done a good job there. The straight line acceleration, if you're using launch control, it hauls ass. You just have to get those RPMs up and then it throws you back. And then when you get this thing going at a higher speed, that's where you really appreciate this because this thing builds a ton of acceleration up to 100 miles an hour. And because this car still has all the great things about the G80, it is one of the quietest cars you can get under $100,000. It is ultra refined. And when you put the drive mode selector back into comfort, it's still about 10% firmer in my takeaway than the regular G80, but it still feels great. The body control's good. It just does not do well when you're pushing this at the limit. And that's something that Hyundai and Genesis have always struggled with on almost all their cars. So here's my question for you. Say you are the gentleman who's gonna spend excess of $60,000 on a luxury sedan, ignoring the, the, the dealership experience or the badge. Would you buy this over the 540 XIM Sport, which fully loaded, it's like four or five thousand dollars more than this car. I would say no, and I, and I started to say this at the beginning. This is the best car they've ever made. It's the best car they've ever made, and there's so many good things about it. But if you're going to spend pushing se almost seventy thousand for a fully loaded one, the person that can afford sixty-five, seventy on this can afford seventy-four. Yes, yeah. and what you get from the BMW, you may not get the ultra refinement some of the cabin space and all of that, what you will get is a drivetrain that is well sorted and a suspension and architecture that they've blended some comfort and great performance out of it. There, It will do a dual purpose better and even the Audis will do that better than this car. So that to me is the biggest letdown. Drivetrain tuning, suspension tuning and connectedness, steering ratio, and they still haven't kind of figured out how to make the rear steer module in the sport version of this car transparent to the driver, and that's kind of where I'm going to leave it. So, Mark, with that, I think it's time for us to head on the final thoughts, sir. All right, Jack. Final thoughts on the G80 Sport. I have some mixed feelings about this car. Despite it being my favorite Genesis or Hyundai product they've ever produced, I just have the takeaway they didn't have enough time or money to fully develop this into what they wanted. And the, the side effect is there's a very disconnected feeling in the driving experience. You've added rear wheel steering, yet it's not all that transparent and it doesn't seem to help the car out a lot because the steering's too slow in the front. It creates this disconnected driving feeling. There's too much lag off the line. The transmission programming is constantly being nerfed in comfort, normal, and sport mode where it's just, it's always easing into the power too much to save itself from getting any traction loss. The only time you can have fun with this car is in Sport Plus with the traction stability control all the way off. Then it will send all the torque to the rear and it makes it feel much more rear wheel drive, but it always seems to feel like something's interfering, cutting out the fun, smoothing out the rough edges. And then when you get it at the limit, like I talked about in the drive, there's always this disconnected feel. And sadly, this is a platform that they should be spending the money and to have that flagship product, not something like a Kona N or an Elantra N, and I get those are affordable cars, but that the G80 is a showcase of what Hyundai and Genesis has been able to do, and they need to just take it all the way. So 
If you want a G80, in my opinion, just get the regular fully loaded G80. It's gonna ride softer, it's gonna do all the luxury car things that the G80 was designed to do from the start. Thanks for watching, I'll see you next time.